Chapter 376, Sawat Di Ka It was Lu Xu's first time at a beach. Although he had seen bikini beauties in the movies, it was still a far cry from real-life experience. Li Yixiao's eyes were almost popping out from his eye sockets. He mumbled, Class A, pass. This Class C is not bad. Eh? There's a Class D. Oh my goodness, Class E. If you think his sentence was upside down, you probably did not get Li Yixiao's underlying meaning. At 2 p.m., the three followed the purely Chinese tour group back to Pattaya. Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu sat at the rear of the yacht. As she cast her look outside from behind the railings, Lu Xiaoyu's little face looked just adorable. It was her first time to see the sea. But Lu Xu was unable to concentrate. Despite her low-profile appearance, the Class C's magic waves could never escape Lu Xu's senses. Lu Xu traced back the energy and saw a girl with a gauze scarf flying over her shoulders. Her bikini was fully covered by her scarf and only had her slender thighs revealed. Probably sensing his stare, she shot a glance at Lu Xu but quickly lowered her head again, as though she suffered from seasickness. Can practitioners and metahumans get seasickness? Lu Xu was unsure too. He had recalled his flying daggers from the snow mountain the moment they reached the beach. On usual days, the daggers could be released to grind mountain rocks, but now, they had to be on standby any time. The original mountain was already nearly half gone, and the daggers only needed a little more time to totally flatten it. But now, it was no time to worry about that. The top priority was a safe return. The girl seated at the boat's bow probably had yet to realize that Lu Xu had his guard up against her. Lu Xiaoyu asked, Lu Xu, what are you looking at? Lu Xu whispered, seeing them dressed in worn-out clothes, I guess they really need some help. Lu Xiaoyu distress level, plus 399. It was only a 30 minutes sail from the island to Pattaya. During the entire journey, the girl remained low-key and kept her head low. Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a look of confirmation after they got ashore. Then, Li Xiao brought them to a residential place on a local three-wheeler. As stowaways, the three of them had nowhere to stay but for a safety shelter prepared by the Heavenly Network. Li Xiao was in high spirits as the three-wheeler zigzagged along the Pattaya streets, did you see the pedestrian street just now? At night. <laughs> it was the most popular destination of Pattaya's nightlife. There, you would be greeted warmly by many pretty girls in skimpy clothing with their apparent hospitality. Lu Xiaoyu had already secretly blacklisted Li Yixiao. It was a mistake to let Lu Xu come to Thailand. No, Li Yixiao's company was the mistake. When they went past a palace-looking building, Li Yixiao raised his eyebrows at Lu Xu, wanna know what place this is? Performance Center? Lu Xu replied ambiguously. Performances are held at the concert hall, not here. At night. <laughs> Li Yixiao's laugh was mysterious. Lu Xiaoyu chided him at once, don't you need to train? Are you a practitioner? Why are you so messed up? Li Yixiao replied lightheartedly, I still have a long way to go till CCB. Why the hurry? Lu Xu froze for a second, what's CCB? Completion of Class B, of course. Short form, CCB. You didn't know? Li Xiao pointed the finger of scorn at him. Excuse me? Lu Xu's face darkened, how did you come up with such a crude name for a title this prestigious? As a heavenly king, could you please have some brains? However, Lu Xiaoyu recognized the palace, which she had drawn out for Lu Xu before. It was an entertainment club, and it harbored the organization they were looking for, who were the operators of the place. Lu Xu identified it too at once. Despite Lu Xiaoyu's horrible drawing skills, her sketch of the white spiky top of the building was absolutely accurate. Lu Xu turned to her, Lu Xiaoyu, you are a genius painter. Lu Xiaoyu laughed, of course. The organization was secretly engaged in human trafficking under the cover of an entertainment club. 
However, their stealthy approach was not due to their incompetence, but their prudence in hiding away from experts upholding justice. Across the world, there were many metahumans who were not solely after fame and fortune. The safety shelter was a far cry from Lu Xu's expectations. Instead of a covert, shabby room, it was rather spacious and was even equipped with a swimming pool. It was not that the heavenly network was very rich, though. In fact, it was rather common in Thailand. Coupled with the cheap housing there, one could get a small villa with merely 10 billion yuan even in its capital, Bangkok. As soon as the sky had darkened, Li Yixiao could not wait to hurry the kids to bed and sneaked out by himself. After he was gone, Lu Xiaoyu asked, When do we start? Tonight. Lu Xu had made up his mind, we cannot be sure whether anyone knows or will know that we are here. But we cannot take any chances. More and more practitioners and metahumans are gathering, awaiting the opening of the remain. They will only become increasingly cautious, not only to us, but to everybody else. This city is becoming more dangerous. Lu Xiaoyu nodded, sure. We will do as you say. We are still unclear about the internal structure of the club. Moreover, the memory pieces obtained didn't show exactly how many people they have. In my opinion, we'd better do a double check. Even if we are exposed, the victory should be ours in a head-on attack, Lu Xu analyzed. Then we might as well chase them out of the house, Lu Xiaoyu commented lightly. Lu Xu pondered, I'm not sure whether anyone will seize the opportunity to take him down when he's seriously injured by us. The city was about to become a party place of the cultivation realm, attracting everyone to the remain. Before its opening, one fewer expert meant less danger and fewer competitors for the treasures in the remain. Lu Xu was thinking, if the smell of the man's blood permeated throughout the city, would those hidden crocodiles and sharks swarm forward to destroy this injured class B expert? Currently, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu had a better way of staying unnoticed. After Anthony was conjured up from Lu Xiaoyu's celestial map, he wrapped his arms around the two's shoulders and sunk deep underground without uttering a word. It was Lu Xu's first time to experience transport via soil. Actually it was not that amazing after all, as they still had to avoid all kinds of tubes and cavities with all carefulness. Lu Xiaoyu suddenly stopped midway. What happened? Lu Xu was curious. An Earth-type class C just went past, Lu Xiaoyu replied. Lu Xu was struck speechless. Why? There was a transport system underground. Never had he expected that other Earth-type metahumans were equally busy as Lu Xiaoyu and himself. Indeed, at that time, the safest place for people with Earth powers was beneath the ground, where they were completely out of sight. Was Earth-type one of the most pervasive powers among all? Lu Xu was not so sure. They took their time to arrive at the periphery of the entertainment site. Lu Xu mused, how to drive them out. Lu Xiaoyu could not be any calmer, tear it down. The sentence seemed like a straightforward yet unquestionable truth in her mouth. She was willing to restrain or unleash her temper, just for Lu Xu. As a matter of fact, Lu Xiaoyu never followed orders as she was expected to. Li Xiao hummed the entire way, as he got out of the taxi and stood in front of the club, he was completely at ease. Back in China, he needed to watch his behaviors as so many eyes were on him as a heavenly king. But here, who cares? Li Xiao had been missing his precious freedom from when he was younger ever since he joined the heavenly network. He moved his stalwart build into the palace and saw for pretty ladies in mini skirts at the entrance. All four held their palms together, Sawat Dika. In Thailand, Sawat Dika was a commonly used greeting. When you were in trouble, if you kept your palms together with a, a Sawat Dika, you could usually get the help you needed. Li Xiao was almost beaming with excitement. He held his palms together, his eyes fixed on the girl's lower legs, Sawat Di. Ka. He spun his head up in shock. Who continued his sentence? At that instant, cracks crawled up the walls of the entire building. Within merely two seconds, the sumptuous structure suddenly fell into sand and soil. 
it must be an Earth-type expert of at least Class B to accomplish such a feat. Li Yixiao coughed out a mouthful of dust while he stood still in his original position. Could he claim that he caught down an entertainment club with a simple Sawati Aka? Screw you. Who the hell did that? I, Li Yixiao, am not a fool. The building collapsed like a sandcastle built by kids at the beach. Although the lightweight sandy soil did not result in much harm, everything that Li Yixiao had imagined crumbled into non-existence as well. Li Yixiao was almost buried alive in the dust. He wiped his face and glanced around, only to see steel bars erecting from the level ground. Everyone in the compound was equally dusty and dirty like himself. The mini skirt girls were gone too. Covered in dirt, one could not even differentiate a male from a female. Li Yixiao gazed sorrowfully at his dreamland and sighed, What the? Chapter 377, Is There Justice? Pattaya used to be a quiet place, but remains had been much sought after ever since the regeneration of spirit chi, as countless people tried to gain something from them. Not to mention others. Li Yixiao's black dragon spear alone was his greatest advantage as it complemented his weakness in far-range attacks. In fact, his close combat capabilities were much stronger than the majority, coupled with his tough skin and the mighty tiger fist. Nonetheless, it was still way too simple for a metahuman and was full of loopholes. Now things had changed, with the black dragon spear as one of his trump cards. On the other hand, Nye Ting's Xian Ting had remained a mystery, for no one was capable of forcing out his last resort. Sometimes the more mysterious your trump card was, the more dangerous you appeared. Nye Ting was rather good at this. Remains were of the highest importance, which was a consensus among all. Almost one-fifth of the world's most brilliant experts would gather here and vie for the treasures. Whereas the rest, while with the heart to join, they had no alternatives but to stay back and guard their base. It would be pointless if one's own assets got stolen when their eyes were on the remains. Despite the rich resources in the remains, it was not justified to risk all one had for them. Therefore, most organizations only dispatched some of their most elite soldiers for the mission, all with a second thought on their mind, to rob those who had not enough power back home. It was only just last month, that there was a pillage of unguarded magical beasts and mines. Actually, metahumans needed spirit chi as well. Otherwise, why the creation of metahumans from the regeneration of spirit chi? Lu Xu, however, did not feel as strongly as he did not need spirit chi at all. Strength type metahumans were special because they required no further power replenishment for their awakening. Usually, the growth of one's power took ages after a breakthrough. The same happened for Little Fury, who improved itself with slow absorption of worldly spirit chi after getting past a bottleneck, until he reached his success. A thought suddenly struck Lu Xu, with abundant fortune at hand currently, maybe he could consider a generous investment in Big Cat, Little Fury, and Naughty Pig with his magical stones and refresher fruits. No matter what, Luo Chang would be his base. So why not train a few top-tier fighters? Although it had been a month since the confirmation of the opening of Pattaya Remain, those who had gathered here still tried to refrain from conflicts. For instance, when they ran into the other Earth-type metahuman just now, it was more or less a friendly encounter you first. <laughs> Thanks. As a matter of fact, at least a dozen groups here were enemies with one another due to the competition for interests and influence. But no one was willing to waste their energy before the opening of the remain. After all, one could conveniently wipe out his foes during the fight for remain resources. Or rather, benefits could well be gained when other rivals had been exhausted. It was human nature. Everyone hoped to be the last man standing. Thus, the best strategy now was to seek cover while others fought till their last breath. Of course, patience was not everyone's strength. Covered in dust, Li Ishiao was almost furious. He wanted to let out a roar, who the hell did this? Do you think it was so easy to have fun for once? Huh? Is there still justice in this world? The compound was humongous. 
many started rising to their feet from the dirt. Li Yixiao's eyes were fixed on everybody in an attempt to identify the culprit. Meanwhile, the club managers, the human trafficking organization who tried to abduct Lu Xiaoyu, gathered together, with the unmistakable knowledge that their aggressor was a Class B Earth-type metahuman. They would not wait for another round of attacks although their opponent's intentions remained unclear. As local scoundrels, they knew very well the sheer number of experts that now resided in Pattaya. If their energy was wasted on this, they might fall into deeper trouble when their plight was taken advantage of. Do Class Bs have some sort of magical weapons with them? This was a commonly wondered question. Someone lowered his voice and commanded in English, Leave by sea. Don't stay here any longer. Li Xiao could not understand English, but he could identify that the 20 plus people who were retreating were metahumans. Should the club not be a place for pretty young girls? Where did all those metahumans come from? Li Xiao pondered for three seconds, it must be them. That was intolerable. Who was Li Xiao? The man who screwed everyone up in the Laos remain. Why was he so powerful? It was because he was unafraid of death, and he would never die. Stop right there. No one leaves until I get an explanation. Li Xiao demanded, his black dragon spear was already growling in his grip. Stunned, those in front turned to look at him, but neither could they understand Li Xiao's words. Confused, the Class B metahuman frowned, could it be him? This person jumped out immediately after the collapse of the building and looked as if he wanted to pick a fight. The only logical deduction was. Language barrier was the cause of their misunderstanding, but facial expressions were a universal language and Li Xiao's anger was apparent. Is he here for revenge? Was something wrong with the practitioners we traded recently? The Class B leader's brows were still knitted together. After a second thought, he decided, fall back and hide on the sea until the remain opens. It's not the time for a fight yet. He made the right move, because he was well aware of how many people were waiting for his fall. However, it did not mean Li Xiao necessarily had his sanity as well. Stop. Don't run. Li Xiao shook his wrists as he darted forward. Instantly, the tip of the black dragon spear opened up, from which a black dragon emerged at once with a loud roar. On one hand, it was a hasty retreat while on the other, one was venting his sadness and anger. First of all, their intentions largely differed. Some people had already recognized Li Xiao in spite of his dusty appearance. After all, his giant build and the black dragon were almost symbolic. Oh, it was him. We should not fight him, but we can try to secretly exterminate the one he was after. Sometimes your vibe was extremely crucial in a fight. When you were surrounded by ten but you managed to kill one enemy while remaining unhurt, people will be scared of you afterwards. They would think twice before picking a fight with you again. First off, they could not be sure whether you could be defeated and second, they themselves might end up dead as well. Chapter 378, A Party in the Cultivation Realm Actually it was the internal strategy of the Heavenly Network to kill a few, hurt a handful and befriend the majority so as to make others behave. Of course, those were meaningless to Li Xiao. At the moment he simply felt sorry for himself. The chase had begun. Lu Xiaoyu was underground and controlled the giggling Anthony who was in close pursuit. They ran into a number of Earth-type onlookers underneath along the way, but no one dared to initiate any action after witnessing his instant transformation of a club, the size of half a stadium into sand. It was too scary, definitely beyond the power of a Class C. Being faster than any other practitioners in the Earth, Anthony was easily recognizable underground. Hence, people often stepped aside immediately beyond his reach to avoid any unnecessary involvement. The situation on the surface was completely out of Lu Xu's sight. Thus, Lu Xiaoyu was his only source of information. In his body, corpse dog and concealed arrow were getting impatient. They were ready to shoot out from the ground and deliver a fatal blow at any time. How's it going? Lu Xu asked. 
Lu Xiaoyu's face was expressionless, Li Xia actually came to this kind of place. How disappointing. Now he's running around after that bunch of people. Lu Xu, you won't go to such places in the future, will you? From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 299. Well well, of course no. Why would I do that? I'm not that sort of person, Lu Xu was confused though, why was she unhappy when nothing had even happened? But Lu Xiaoyu's distress points were insignificant at the current moment. All the points from Li Xiao and the human traffickers were credited to him, as he and Lu Xiaoyu were the root cause of the misunderstanding. The rate of the background updates was simply satisfying. Meanwhile, Li Xiao was almost losing control as he closed in from behind. At the same time, they had become the center of attention of the many experts hiding in the city. It was a party in the cultivation realm, with its attendees covering almost four-fifths of all major practitioner organizations across the globe. Inevitably, those experts felt lonely in this world of commoners, whose abilities were far below theirs. Now, however, they were together in a city crowded with experts of the same level. The dangerous environment even triggered some people's urge to have a real fight in the remain. The current moment, on the other hand, was a perfect chance for them to have a peek at their competitors' capabilities. Just like sharks after the smell of blood, numerous practitioners were on their way there as they scraped against the rooftops. Distance was nothing to them. As a result, they ran into one another midway. Strangers exchanged a cold stare before they continued running, while foes would keep it low until the outbreak of a fight. Most commoners in Pattaya were totally unaware of these events. Nothing seemed to have occurred in their world, except for a few runners racing on the rooftops occasionally. To them, it felt like a live show. Li Xiao was still running close behind. Those in front were getting frustrated, is he a bloody idiot? Who can translate what he was saying? Why on earth was he after us? At first, they thought he was the Earth-type metahuman, but his identity became clear at the sight of his black dragon spear. Then why are you still chasing us since you are not the Earth-type metahuman? Li Xiao established his fame in a fight in Southeast Asia, so he was quite a celebrity in the local cultivation scene. However, the question was not whether he could be defeated. If they themselves got ambushed after their failure to kill him, they would be doomed. But, they could not escape his pursuit. At that moment, a fire sprang up from a rooftop ahead of them, with sounds of an explosion mingled within. A fight had already started. It was getting chaotic. The original situation was much simpler. Angered and agitated, Li Ishia wanted to beat up the suspects who ruined his dreamland. In the end, due to the complicated composition of the Pattaya population, two groups of enemies had already bumped into each other before he could catch up with his suspects. The explosion was like an ignited fuse as it immediately set everyone's mood on fire. Just when everybody thought the remain would open in peace, conflicts suddenly broke out across the entire city. At another place, two organizations met on a rooftop. The leader of one group was off his guard because of their previous partnership, but then they were unexpectedly attacked. Without hesitation, another fight had begun. Meanwhile, another self-conceited Class B expert launched an attack in search of some excitement, but was soon assailed before he finished up his rivals. Honestly speaking, even Li Xiao himself was shocked by the rising number of fights going on. What was happening? Why was everyone fighting tonight? What happened to peace? Was today some special day? Li Xiao was nowhere near being careful. He was certain that his life would not be in danger unless he was surrounded by six class Bs. Being thrown into such a disorderly situation brought him no pressure at all, and it felt more like a welcome party of crackers. It was different from the bland, water-like life in China. There was so much fun here. He liked it here a lot. Those in front were unnerved by the increasingly chaotic city. Things were spinning out of control. The Class B metahuman remained serious as he dashed towards the sea, can anyone who understands Chinese ask him what's going on? 
if he's not happy with our business, we can offer some compensation first and fight him in the remain. It's not the time for fights right now. He could not stay calm any longer. Although he was faster than Liu Xiao, his minions were not. Some of them were already lagging behind. Besides, he was aware that some people uninvolved in the commotion were following closely, waiting for the right time. They could not afford to wait anymore. But everyone shook their heads. No one understood Chinese. In the past, it was said that Chinese was a commonly spoken language in Thailand. But the truth was, it was English. Moreover, they were not Thai, but local residents from foreign countries. Chapter 379 Everything's Under Control Now there was not enough time for the installation of a translation application. Suddenly, a minion recalled a scene he had seen before. I once saw two Chinese tourists greeting each other and I can vaguely remember their pronunciation. How about I halt him with a greeting first and think about solutions later? Then what are you waiting for? Do it now, the Class B metahuman urged. The minion calmed himself down and tried to recall the setting back then. Then, he turned to shout as he continued running, What ya looking at? Li Yixia was stunned at once. I never knew you were so, bloody rude. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 666. The truth was, at that time a tourist from northeast China held grudges against another man in the group, for the latter was a latecomer who delayed everyone's schedule. Thus, the northeastern man was about to start a quarrel. Then, the tour guide stopped them in time with an amicable smile. But the minion could not understand a word. The guide's heartwarming grin, together with the crisp pronunciation of the four syllables, made the sentence rather memorable. However, the fire-type class B metahuman had caused quite a commotion earlier, and even Lu Xu heard the noise from underground. Curious, he asked, how's everything now? Lu Xiaoyu gave him a look of reassurance, everything's under control. Wait a moment. Bring me up to see what's going on, Lu Xu was skeptical. Once he emerged from the surface, Lu Xu was stupefied. The entire world was shaking under energy waves, as though the cultivation realm had unleashed its full potential in an all-out battle. Lu Xu hesitated for a moment, this is what you called, everything's under control? Lu Xiaoyu nodded, don't focus on the details. I believe you have some misunderstanding about the term details, Lu Xu's face darkened. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 199. Why do I feel that? Lu Xu paused at Li Yixiao's figure, why do I feel that he's angrier? What happened? Lu Xiaoyu gave him a cold stare, maybe he had some misunderstanding about the term details. Thought. Lu Xu? Could you please make sense when you spoke? Forget about it, it was not the time to bother about this. Catch up now. Assist Li Yixiao in wiping out the class B amidst the chaos. At the moment, the entire Pattaya was in disarray, which exterminated many incompetent candidates. It was the perfect time to take their opponents' lives. Giggling, Anthony sank into the ground once again with Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu. When everyone's attention was directed at Li Yixiao, no one even noticed Anthony's existence underground, a powerful weapon ready to reap lives at any time. Anthony rushed forward at his top speed and immediately took the lead. In a split second, the white sand on his wrist suddenly broke apart and shot up from the earth towards the class B metahuman. He meant to kill with his first move. Throughout the entire duration, Lu Xu, Lu Xiaoyu and Anthony were hiding below the surface. Now, the white sand was separated into two halves. One hit at all the minions while the other closed in around the class B expert in the form of a long chain. Currently, all Lu Xiaoyu and Lu Xu had to do was to hold the class B back for a little while and wait for the others to act. The man sensed that something was up at the sight of the flying white sand. Actually, his greatest concern was the Earth-type metahuman who tore down his club, but was cautious about his inactivity all this while. What was his purpose? Simply to dismantle my building? Surely not. The Earth-type metahuman in hiding had always been a threat on his mind. 
he had finally made his appearance now. Suddenly, numerous purple crows sprang out from his body with a loud roar. Those were not real birds, but composed entirely of energy. He was of the materialization type. It used to be said that materialization was the strongest among all awakened powers, because they could conjure up anything out of thin air simply with their will, be it fire or water. And the scariest of all, they can give you Buddha's palm if that was what you wanted. It was the power of imagination. In the Northern Song Dynasty, there was a famous artist called Wen Tong, who was especially talented in painting bamboo. In order to sharpen his skills, he spent all his energy and time in bamboo forests as he observed their appearance, day after day and year after year. As a result, he never needed a draft before the completion of a work on bamboo, for he had bamboo in his own brain. In fact, powers of materialization worked in the same way. However, people had come to the realization that the materialization type was not as strong as expected with gradual improvement in the cultivation realm. This was because, first of all, the strength of the object conjured was proportional to one's own capabilities. It would not make sense if a class E managed to create a class B expert. Moreover, how could you be stronger than a genuine fire-type metahuman if you were only a faker? An analogy on point would be those inexperienced actors and actresses who try to mimic superstars on entertainment shows. No matter how hard they tried, they still could not match the originals. Let alone the fact that all Class B element-type metahumans could transform into natural elements, but those of the materialization type could not. It was claimed that some powers of the materialization type were still yet to be discovered, but it was a universally acknowledged truth that there were no supreme candidates of this type in the world so far. Others also asserted that there might be an increase in materialization metahumans once their true strengths were unleashed one day. But in reality, there had not been enough time for them to conduct thorough research on the potential of this type since the regeneration of spirit chi. The endless crowd of purple crows were still flying towards the white sand relentlessly and exploded upon contact. Hardeningly, though, the movement of the sand was indeed thwarted. But his minions were not as lucky. Lu Xu himself had first-hand experience of the power of the sand, which almost outran him even when Anthony was injured, not to mention those ordinary people of class C or D. The scattered sand particles took accurate aim between everyone's eyebrows, killing those below class C at once. Even the class Cs had to put in all their strength in order to stay alive. In the next instant, Li Yixiao had already caught up, his black dragon spear swept forward with an unstoppable air. Burning with exasperation, he dealt a heavy blow, so what if I'm looking at you? The class B expert was horrified, he was being encircled by two class Bs and many others were waiting by the side. Instantly, five purple tigers, each in class C, materialized in the air and leaped towards Li Yixiao. Li Yixiao roared in fury, the giant tiger sign on his back flickered and reached a height of 10 meters. Suddenly, a black dragon sprang out from the black dragon spear and clawed at the five tigers. Unexpectedly, the two sides were so well matched that neither could gain an upper hand. With the tigers being held back, Li Yixiao pressed forward with an indomitable will towards the materialization type class B expert, and he held his spear in his tight grip. Although he seemed rather unreliable most of the time, no one could deny his fighting abilities. Chapter 380, I Hit the Wrong Person Nye Ting had always been respectfully addressed as the first in the East by the external powers, while Li Yixiao was known as the first warrior in the East. In this moment, his spear was spinning freely in his hands and took down all the class Cs who were busy defending against the white sand. His ultimate target, the materialization type class B, was holding a purple lightning in his grip. The lightning, likely his trump card, was emitting immense energy so powerful that the surrounding air lit up with purple electric currents. But Li Xiao did not bother to give it a second look, answer me, what's wrong with me looking at you? In a split second, he hurled his lance towards the man at full strength, followed by a punch that almost tore the ground apart. After the man warded off the attack with his lightning and spirit chi armor, he immediately catapulted his still powerful thunderbolt in Li Yixiao's direction. 
Contrary to his expectations, Li Ixiao charged forward through the lightning and endured the tremendous pain. The force in his tiger sign punch did not seem to diminish at all. The class B had already lost his will to fight. It was a fatal miscalculation to underestimate Li Ixiao's stubbornness, as nothing was comparable to his goal. Li Xiao was well aware that he was rather obstinate in general, despite occasional flashes of cleverness. Besides that, he was kind of honest in some cases, or maybe it should be said, foolish. But ever since he was mature enough to form his own judgment, one thing had remained clear, nothing could stop him once he set his mind on it. That was his greatest strength, even till the degree of eliciting fear. Breaking out of the encirclement of thunderbolts, Li Xiao had decided that this punch was going to kill. The man had tried to flee. At this very instant, however, his shield of crows collapsed under the white sand, which immediately concentrated into densely arranged clusters and bombarded his back. There was no way to escape. Then, Li Xiao's fist banged onto the man's body without any mercy. Under the united assault of two Class B experts, the first Class B had fallen tonight. Li Ixiao frowned and watched as the white sand penetrated the floor like water. The killer underground who had just joined forces with him seemed to have no intention of showing himself. But Li Ixiao did not plan on chasing him either. His first reaction was to retrieve his spear and search the dead body. Suddenly, a thought struck him, this fellow was of materialization type, but the one underneath was of earth. Wait a moment, why was he after the materialization guy again? Was it because an earth-type expert tore down his dreamland? He was thoroughly confused. After a total of one minute, Li Ishia realized. Bloody hell. I hit the wrong person. From Li Ishiao's distress, plus 999. At this moment, however, a flash of a sword suddenly sliced open the sky with a clang. The sound was not real. It resonated between the sky and the land and served as a warning for all practitioners. Afterwards, a serious voice sounded in the clouds with a tinge of fury, audible to the entire city. The opening of the remain is near. Go inside if you crave a fight. Now, leave. It was in Chinese, but the anger therein was universally understood. The message was clear, Li Xieni, the chief director of the Golden Foundation, had arrived in Pattaya. He could no longer tolerate the grand fight which had affected the commoners. Fall back. The Foundation's attitude was straightforward. No practitioner trafficking and no combat that involved disturbing or killing commoners. Though weak, they were the basis of the whole cultivation ream. Thus, there would be nothing left if they were gone. The foundation might seem to be poking its nose in other people's business. But how could you bargain with them while they had class A's and others did not? What was a bargaining chip? It was widely known that class A's were the greatest bargaining chip in the current era. All of a sudden, all fighting in the city ceased. No one would take the risk of offending him before they could confidently overpower Li Xieni. The riot ended just as quickly as how it started. In fact, with a dozen Class Bs and hundreds of Class Cs in Pattaya, the city would have been destroyed in Li Xieni's absence. Meanwhile, Li Ixiao recoiled at Li Xieni's voice, eager to return to his safe house. He was well aware of the old swordmaster's dislike towards him. Moreover, he had caused the Golden Foundation quite an inconvenience at the Lao's remain, although he was targeting everyone, not the Foundation particularly. However, before he could move his legs, Li Xieni descended from the sky and fixed him with a cold stare, What are you doing here? Please, Li Ixiao put on a good-natured smile, I'm only a tourist. A tourist? Li Xieni raised his brows in clear disbelief. Then, Li Ixiao immediately turned and ran away. Just in case Li Xieni would catch up to him, he let out a loud shout as he accelerated, Chinese don't beat Chinese. Chinese don't beat Chinese. Chinese don't beat. The walking recorder slowly disappeared from sight. Li Xieni had no intention to pursue. But his face darkened at the seeming similarity between Li Ixiao and Lu Xu. 
I heard that he was quite close to the kid. Meanwhile, a message flashed on Lu Xu's background panel, from Li Xianyi's distress, plus 199. Already back in the safe house, Lu Xu was puzzled, why was the old man unhappy with him without even seeing his face? What did he do wrong? Now, their revenge had culminated in total success. Despite having no chance to search the body for treasures, Lu Xiaoyu had captured her second-class bee spirit, their greatest loot of the journey. Lu Xu secretly breathed a sigh of jealousy, why was his younger sister so much luckier than himself? It would not be an overstatement to describe Lu Xiaoyu as the strongest person below class A's, would it? Of course, Lu Xiaoyu had two weaknesses as well. On one hand, she herself was only a fragile class C and on the other, no matter how strong, her spirits were no match to Lu Xu's corpse dog and concealed arrow at all. It was just like a needle was the natural enemy of balloons. Honestly, Lu Xu could not explain the mechanism behind Lu Xiaoyu's coexisting celestial map. But he was absolutely sure about one thing. He would never attack Lu Xiaoyu, never, except for the time he screwed up with her pig. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens